Now that Microsoft has killed regular Windows, we only have LTSC in my opinion. 25H2 is a nightmare. All they did was add a bunch of AI slop and bloat and spyware and nothing else for you. The performance is not increased at all. So I don't think that anyone should be using regular Windows anymore. We should all be using LTSC. But the problem with LTSC for a lot of people is that you get it and it doesn't have a lot of stuff installed that you would expect to be installed for a desktop operating system. For instance, if you try to open a JPEG or whatever, it's going to be like, okay, what do you want to open this with? We don't have anything installed. If you want to like open up, I don't know, some video files or something, it's going to like not have any codecs. So what we're going to do right now is set up LTSC so that it functions as a desktop operating system. We're going to install all the stuff that you need to make it feel just like regular Windows. But first, let me tell you where I activate my copy of LTSC and where I get my keys. I've been heavily advocating for the LTSC versions of Windows because they don't have recall, they don't have any bloat, they don't have any spyware. The Windows 10 LTSC IoT has extended support until 2032. And then we have Windows 11, which is very similar to 10 once you strip all the nonsense off of it. And that has support until October 10th, 2034. You also have Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 Home. And just ignore these prices, we're going to make them better. We got Windows 10 Pro, but we're at the end of life on that. So just I would recommend grabbing IoT. And then we have two different flavors of Office, Office 2016 Pro and Office 2019. These are offline versions, so you don't have to pay the monthly subscription fee. You just do the one time fee and then, you know, you're not going to have Copilot installed inside your copy of Office. That's always, you know, watching your stuff, which is weird that Microsoft is doing that now. But yeah, this is a way to get around all that. Just don't sign in with your Microsoft account. All right, so let's go ahead and buy a copy of Windows 11 LTSC IoT edition. This is the 2024 edition. I'm gonna click on buy it now, and then we're gonna use the coupon code TS25. And watch the price go from 3604 down to 2703. All right, let's go ahead and submit the order. If you're looking for a way to pay without um, a fee, that's probably the best way to do it, but a little bit of a fee is not a big deal for me. There we go, cool. Now we can just go to our user center and you'll see there's our brand new key that we've got. Click on view keys and codes. Scroll down, All right here's your key. So just go ahead and copy that. Press start, type activate. Ignore the fact that mine looks all weird. Click on activation settings. Paste in your product key, hit next, and you'll be activated. Don't be messing around with those exorbitant retail keys. Grab an OEM key. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. First things first, we don't have the Microsoft Store. You don't have to install it. You can just install stuff from Microsoft without logging in very easily. They've just got everything right over here. So the first thing you're going to need is a way to view your photos. And I actually like the newer Microsoft Photos app. It works just fine for me. So I download that. But if you like the legacy app better, which might be a little bit faster, I may have to test both of them back and forth. So yeah, you can you can download the legacy one. After that, you're going to need WebP and you don't have an extension for that. So if you're dealing with internet files, well, you're always going to need to install this. Let me grab this WebP extension right here. At the time of making this video, the, the legacy photos is not downloading. It's just spinning. So that's weird. Maybe they'll, I don't know, maybe they want you to go to the store, but I'm not going to do it. All right. So after you get all that stuff installed, you're going to need a calculator. And I actually prefer the new calculator to the old calculator for a couple different reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and download this calculator and install it. Once I get the calculator installed, I'll give you a little tip. Now, if you want to see your history like we do, I don't know. There we go. Calculating my monthly income. Just uh, just pull this over to the side. And once you get to a certain level of this, it pops out and shows you the history. That was driving me nuts. I was like, where's my history? I was looking through all the options and stuff. They don't tell you. until It's goofy. But yep, there we go. And that'll also work if you just, you know, press your start button and type calc. It opens up this calculator and opened up another instance. There it is, huge. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's that. So the new tipping tool, when you download it, it's this one. Now it works just fine, but I have one problem with it. You can go in and uncrop things. So if you were to like, let's say snip this much of an image, well, it, it grabbed that. And, and this is what you have, but if you send this to somebody, they can actually uncrop the image. It's really weird how it works. It saves more image than your, uh, more than your snip, more information. So I don't use this one. I use this old school one. So how do you get that? Well, I'll show you. If you go to Windows, if 
actually it's in when you know windows old if you've upgraded it'll be in there for sure but just go to windows system 32 and we should have a snipping tool just if we go down here right there it is snipping tool.exe cool so we can just make a shortcut to this to our desktop or if you press windows key r you can type snipping tool.exe so what i usually do because i use open shell is i just right click and drag this to my open shell start menu and drop it in here somewhere like there doesn't matter create shortcut here now whenever i hit start i should type snip and it'll show up here i've already got it registered so i don't need my shortcut but if it's not showing up right here you can do that and it'll bring this up so yeah do that if you want the other version so if you're trying to do any video game stuff pick up a controller and hit this and it's like oh there's no uh, nothing to open up a link there's no way to open up all these gaming things well you might need the game bar so some of the stuff you can't just install it actually requires you to install the store and you know if you really don't care installing the store is the easiest way to do it but um, if you just want to install that one app package, well, here's what you do. So for instance, here at the game bar, it just says install. If you click on that and you have the store up and running, then it'll pop open and you'll be able to install it in the store. But if you're not using the store, well, you're going to have trouble getting it installed. So here's what you do. You grab this right here, that, that number, and that, that's what you need. Just right there after detail and then right before the question mark. That's the app ID. Head over here to store.rg hyphen adguard.net paste it in there make sure you do fast check mark and what it does is it just searches for all of the installers that are associated with this down here on the bottom this is what you want you just want this app x bundle just click on that to download it i've already done it once if it says hey potential security risk because it's not a commonly downloaded file you're gonna have to allow download uh, i would probably just go ahead and you know right click on this file and say scan with defender a quick scan just make sure since it's uh, not downloaded that often but i'm just going to copy this entire file and put it somewhere easy like uh here in uh, c goods it doesn't matter just put it somewhere where you know where it is and uh, i'm going to copy this entire thing give me all of it Control a to get also the end right there hold on shift and right click to open a powershell window here why not all right now we are inside that folder right there with our PowerShell. All right, so what you want to type is add, capital add, hyphen, app, x, package, and then space, paste it right there. There we go. It's just installing the Microsoft, just installing the, the Xbox overlay. If it throws any errors, it'll tell you like, hey, there's some, you know, dependencies missing. You may have to go and install those dependencies. Again, the easiest way to do this is to just install the store and that is this command ws reset space dash i that's windows store reset um, if there's any stuff going on so this will work for most people some people say that their version of ltsc that doesn't work but give this a try if you want to install the store and then not have to do this but for any other apps that you see that just have an install button this is how you got to do it got to jump through a few hoops for some of these things but it all depends on what you want to do next up for codex well, you're going to need something to watch all your stuff, and you're going to need a way to do it. I like using Codec Guide's K-Lite Codec Pack, and the standard is plenty for most people. It lets you view all this stuff and many more. Like a 90s or 80s commercial, yes. And more! Right there, Media Player Classic, it comes with that, and it's the home cinema version, so whatever. You can also get VLC if you want, but this is, this is fine for me, for 99% of the stuff I do. Next up, if you play older games... Well, you might want DirectX. It's gonna it's gonna need it. So when you're ever you're you know if you're installing stuff on Steam, it'll automatically do this. But just if you have like older games that don't have their own DirectX installer, then you can come over here and just grab the redistributable and install that. So it's pretty easy to do. But I don't know if that's even worth mentioning. So and then for just other stuff, you're gonna need a copy of .NET. So I'm gonna grab .NET. This is just some runtimes that enable other things. These are just you know dependencies to make sure that make sure you got stuff in the background all right so now we're going a little bit above and beyond with power toys so power toys is made by microsoft and i i feel like this is the direction that windows should be going in not all the ai nonsense it should be going in a direction of functionality and providing things that people want so i'll give you a quick just look at this power toys do i have it installed 
Well, let's install it on this machine. Just grab the setup. I'm going to do it machine wide. It doesn't matter. There we go. .NET's done. All right. Power toys. Yes. So immediately the first nice thing that it does, we just right click on Krimith. We've got some new stuff here. And that is resize with image resizer. So now we can come over here and like easily resize stuff with right click. That's just one of the many features of power toys. There we go. I'm going to leave diagnostics off. And then we can just go through the diff you know the different things we have right here. Advanced paste. I'm going to go through a few that I think are handy. Just a random color picker that you can set to open up with some hotkeys and let you pick any color from your desktop. Really good for artists and stuff. There's your command palette, which is very similar to Launchy or whatever. Push window alt space. And look at this. Now we, now we just type whatever we're going to launch. I mean, it's very similar to pressing the start button and then typing what you're going to launch with. This is open shell. So this one I love, command not found. Whenever you're typing something in PowerShell, if it like can't figure out what the command is, it's like, maybe you need to install this Winget package. It gives you some options there. Just crop and lock, environmental variable, uh, environmental variables. Fancy zones is my favorite thing. It lets you literally set up your own snapping zones. It's especially good if you have multiple monitors. We got some file explorer add-ons. Too much to cover in this video. There's the image resizer I was just talking about. Uh, yeah, there's I could make a whole video on all this stuff. Run is very similar. I feel like um, the command pilot's a step farther than run, but yeah. Okay. Next up, I use Open Shell for my start menu. As you can see right here, it's a different start menu, and I've got it skinned to look like. Uh, Windows XP and perform kind of like Windows XP because I like that one, but it still gives you the active search and you can set all this up. If you're totally fine with the Windows 11 bubbly nonsense, then by all means. But for me, I really like using Open Shell. So you can configure this to your heart's content and I've already made a video on that, so I'll leave it alone for now. Next up on the list, if you're using an HDR monitor, LTSC does not come with the Windows HDR calibration tool. So when you go in, and I'll just show you here. You right click and you do your display settings and you come over here and you're like, all right, for HDR, you wanna turn that on. I'm not gonna turn it on right now, but if you wanna do like HDR calibration, you click on this. See, it says, oh no, we don't have a link. Ah, it's not there. Don't worry about it. Just install that and then, and uh, well, I'm using it on a display that doesn't support HDR. My middle display does, but then you can actually go through the Windows HDR calibration so yeah, you can get that just fine right there. And last but not least, if you use a scanner at home, you may have some issues because it doesn't come with the scan utility. Let me just go ahead and get this Windows scan utility. If you've got another scan utility, by all means use that. Uh, one of the reasons why I use the, the Windows scan utility is because it supports both the flatbed and the document feeder, and not all scan programs will support both of those things for all of the different devices out there. You may have to use some custom software, but this one does allow me to have my source be the flatbed or the feeder, and then I can pick my file type. It's just a simple little basic thing, but it's got all the stuff I need, and then, yeah, works just fine. All right, so this video was really just covering the basics. I've made a video on how I set up my copy of LTSC that goes up a lot farther than this. I could I install all kinds of different things, but this is just core stuff, you know? This is just the basics. This is just the stuff that people hop in the comments and like, hey, I installed LTSC, but there's no photo view, or there's no this, there's no, there's no, whenever I click on a link with the, the gaming stuff, it's like, oh, you can't, and I can't, there's no scanning thing. So that's all I did in this video. Just show you how to do that. And now it's as fully featured and functional as any copy of Windows, but it doesn't have the bloat and the AI nonsense and all the tech bro garbage that they keep shoving down our throats because now Windows is hostile, but LTSC is still functional. So yeah, that's enough of my little rant. Hope you enjoyed the video and I uh, hope this uh, turns your copy of LTSC into something that is just easier to use. Let me know what you think. And if you have other things that you think should be included in this core list, I'm not talking about like, you know, your favorite web browser or your favorite video games or, you know, your favorite productivity applications, Notepad++ or whatever. I'm talking about just core applications that are not available when you try to do basic things. Let me know in the comments. All right, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.